Hi Chico here and I'm back with um, another quick uh, video for you guys. One of the really exciting things or one of the things that I'm really excited about with a brand new Resolve 10 is basically the added support for OFX plugins and for those of you who saw my last video uh, where I was showcasing the top 10 new features I had mentioned during around the end of the video that I for one was one of the guys who was beating the drums in the ears of Blackmagic Design to incorporate OFX plugins and the reason is that I've been in post production for a very long time and I've used applications well finishing applications which support OFX plugins and I know that kind of magic it does so push production and how much time it saves you now example of that there is a plugin that a lot of you might know about and it's called film convert now film convert is an amazing plugin I've been using it since day one and it keeps evolving they keep adding new camera support as is available and it basically takes your image your digital image and you know does some magic to it I don't want to go through a whole explanation but it's able to take your digital image to let it emulate a certain film stock whether from Kodak or Fujifilm etc and the way that I work well I used to work until Resolve 10 is I'll do my finishing my grading I'll send out high-risk media into After Effects where I actually have a license plugin for After Effects then I'll add my film convert do whatever I have to do in there then I'll re-render from After Effects to my deliverable now as you can see this is two steps that have been taken here and it could take a very long time especially if you're working on a feature or you're working on something that is more than your 30 second mark like you know a commercial etc okay so it could be very time consuming but thank god that Blackmagic Design finally listened to all of us who are clamoring for OFX plugin and now we have OFX plugin support so uh, for those of you who have film convert head on to the website um, if you don't have it go onto the website um, and you know you want to use it in Resolve make sure you download the version for Sony Vegas now when you download the one for Sony Vegas and install it it's automatically gonna be in your OFX plugin folder on your Mac or Windows okay and once that is done you can be able to go ahead and use it here in Resolve okay and I'm gonna show you guys why I just love it so much to access some um, OFX plugins in Resolve 10 basically, you come here to the FX um, button and you click it and it's going to open a new tray here, okay, on the right side. And it's really nothing too complicated. You have your library, which will just uh, be all the plugins, uh, OFX plugins you have installed in your system. And settings. And initially settings will be grayed out and it can only... Uh, be usable once you apply the plugin because that is where you're going to go ahead and do you know apply changes to your plugin and etc etc okay uh, as you guys can see the first on my list here is from convert hooray okay so no longer do I have to finish here and resolve render out to after effects and apply film convert and waste all that time I can apply it right here and resolve and I'm ready to go so I'm going to make some space here okay and I'm going to um, add a new one I'm doing everything here uh, with the uh, mouse and the keyboard I'm not going to use the panels because I need you guys to know exactly what I'm doing okay so I'm going to go ahead and just if you want to apply a, a plugin you just go to where the plugin um, basically icon is all right and you drag that and put in a node and once you put as you can see the settings uh, is basically now um, workable Okay, and for those of you who know about um, this uh, plugin, you could go and begin to change this and do what you have to do, but I'm not going to go into that. Okay, um, once you apply a plugin inside settings, you have this um, highlight orange here that basically is showing you that you know the plugin is in effect. If you want to bypass it temporarily um, to look at the original footage, you could just click on this orange um, highlight and it just turns it off temporarily. Okay. So I could turn it off. Let's just say you do some changes. Let's just say I crank my exposure all the way down. Okay, oops, you know, I want to reset everything. I'll just come to the top right here and I'll click on this button, resets everything to default. So I could start over again. Okay, so that's awesome. If at any point I need some uh, more real estate to do my work here, 
I could just temporarily shut off the FX here and it just pushes the trade to the corner and I could do my rip. If I want to see it, I just click it back again and it comes back. All right. The other thing that I'll probably see added is um, to have an extra button here where you could um, delete a node. But um, I don't really think it is really important because at first glance, you would think there is no way you could remove. Did I say node? I meant a plugin. There is no way you could remove or, you know, delete a plugin. Okay, so you might be um, tempted to just select the, uh, the node and delete the whole node together. But I'll show you a better way. You could go ahead and right click on the node and there's an option to remove OFX plugin. And this is very good because sometimes you just don't want to keep creating nodes all the time. Okay, you create a node, you put film convert, you do something you don't like, you want to put a different plugin. You delete the node, create another node, and put a different plugin. You don't want to do all of that. So you just remove it, you retain the node, and you could go ahead and add something else. Now, the magic behind this, now this is not even the most excited part. The excited part of this is that since the plugins are being applied per node basis, you still have now the same power that you have with the new features that are incorporated into the node functions of Resolve. Let me show you what you, I'm talking about. When I right click here, as I said in my first uh, video, you have the ability to choose in what color space you work in. RGB, YUV, HSL. Not only that, depending on the color space that you're in, you have the ability to enable or disable channels. So if I'm working in RGB, naturally, the first channel is my red, second is my green, third is my blue. So let me show you guys why I'm excited about this. If I decide to say, you know what, let me just go here and now pick up another plugin. I have a Jernat Sapphire, and I want to apply a blur, but I want to apply the blur to just my blue channels, okay? For those of you guys who are very smart enough, you know where this is going. I could go ahead and now disable channel 1 and channel 2. And now if I apply my blur, take a look at the image here. When I drag and drop it on my node, it applies to just the blue channels, okay? So this is just so awesome because at the end of the day, you could be able to add plugins just the way that you want it to set in channels, isolating them, and creating very stylized looks. So this is why I'm just so, so excited about the added support of WFX plugin. And the fact that you have it per node and you still have the same functions of the nodes that you have in grading is just amazing. Okay, so this is just a quick video to show you guys um, the OFX plugin support. I mean, I mentioned it briefly in uh, the top 10 uh, new features video, but I just, I'm just showing you guys why this is very important to have because plugins like Jernat Sapphire, I mean, I use them, I've been using them on my Avid and uh, After Effects. So now, no longer do I have to render out my high res media out of Resolve, go into After Effects just to apply these plugins and re-render again. I could do everything right here in Resolve and basically call it done, saving me an extra step and making my clients happy. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I just want to do this. I never done this before. Um, subscriptions I get in, you know, they they keep coming in. I'm so thankful for it. Um, I'm not too big on YouTube. I try the best I can to take my time to do whatever video that I feel that you know you guys might benefit. Okay, so keep subscribing. Um, I guess you know the more you subscribe, the more I'll be able to be motivated to show you guys um, a lot of the things that is happening uh, in the post world. Okay, and if you have any questions, any comments, maybe you have um, an idea for a tutorial or you have a request for a tutorial, um, just shoot me a message on email. And at the end of the day, as soon as I get the time, trust me, I'm going to get it up for you guys. All right, so thanks for watching.